Since the beginning of time, man has been running out of storage space on his PC and gaming devices. And man has also had to figure out these solutions on his own. And I reckon that's why you're here too. Now, if you're here just wanting the detailed installation guide for the PS5 SSD, go to the time shown on screen. Cyberpunk 2077 finally shipped, and I'm out of PS5 storage space for all my cute anime girl games. Now this really wasn't a surprise to anybody, I mean you start with less than 700 gigabytes of usable space on the included drive. It's faster than heck, but you don't get much mega flops. Because of this, I did already have a plan, I was going to take my main PC, take the boot drive out, throw that in the M.2 expansion slot in the PS5, and then I was just going to go pick myself up a, a nice big upgrade for my main PC, get this one filled with a little bit more space for PS4 games, it's a win-win. So why am I making a video right now? Why didn't I just do that and say, hey, grab that, do that, here we go. Sony confirms the PS5 won't support SSD storage expansion at launch. This is reserved for a future update. There was so much information and news circulating at launch just all over the place that I might have just missed that one teeny little detail. Well, great, so Sony is nice enough to tell us that they will open up this M.2 expansion slot eventually down the road sometime, maybe. Maybe they'll tell us, or maybe it'll happen, or maybe it won't happen. So I guess I could just kind of sit here and wait for that announcement to eventually make that upgrade, or I could break down all the differences between all the different PS5 storage options and find myself the best solution to the problem. Something that has speed, price, and convenience all rolled into one, while keeping in mind that Sony at some point will open up that slot, and let us install in there. So I don't want it, whatever I get to say, just completely not need it anymore down the road when I wanna do that. Let's see what our options are, you know? Because for a few reasons, I definitely 100% will be using that slot when it becomes available. Let's scroll down. Now, ultimately the best drive, ooh. Now, ultimately the best drive and the best solution here is gonna come down to each user and what their preferences are. But I do think that there's a couple downsides that mainly hold true for every option in front of us. Oh, there was one more. I'm just gonna unplug this and everything's fine. So I already have an eight terabyte external hard drive, the plug-in power. I usually just use it for work, work data. Um, you might already have a two to four terabyte external hard drive laying around, or maybe you already have all your PS4 games on it. So why not just use that? Why not just, it's already there. It's one of the cheaper options. That should be really the best way to go, right? Look, I know it's really tempting to go this route. You can get a really okay, cheap, two terabytes for like 50 bucks as an external drive. One of the biggest benefits to upgrading to the PS5 was having all your games and apps and stuff load insanely fast. So it's really a waste to not take advantage of the new opportunities here, man. Your PS4 games will certainly run on the cheaper drive, but it'll probably be even slower than it was on the base PS4's internal hard drive. And that's mainly because of the delivery system. Whenever you have an external hard drive, there's literally just a hard drive or an SSD inside of it that has to go through an interface and that's gonna slow it down. So just as a base rule, anything that's USB is going to be slower than whatever was in there is plugged just directly to the motherboard. Not to mention, you're probably gonna see slow sustained writing times. You've probably seen it before in your PC or another game console. Whenever you start downloading or whenever you start transferring a file or copying a file, whatever, it starts off really fast and it's really scooch in there. And then it just stops. It'll go from 200 megabytes per second to 10. And you're going, what's wrong? Is it filling up? No, it just doesn't have the endurance and the legs like something you might get, you know, the same drive might be just completely different. That's a big problem that I've seen when using external drives in general. And some of them do get around that, but a lot of it too is what kind of plug you got there. And most hard drive enclosures aren't gonna be using USB 3.0, 3.1, and those can get around that to a certain degree. So just, if you have one of these, give it a try. Download a couple PS4 games on there, see how it plays. If it takes 30 seconds in between every load, well, maybe you do need the next solution. So my number one choice for those who don't care about the price and really want uh, the ease of access would be to go for something like an external SSD. This isn't that, this is just representative of what it will look like. Quick thing to think about, there's essentially two kinds of SSD speeds you wanna make sure and look. One would be more like just the SATA that's inside there, maybe top 550 megabytes per second as the highest speed or an M.2 might be in there and it can get up to like 1500 megabytes per second. So definitely double check that. 
A real nice thing is most of them are even smaller than a 2.5 inch drive. Plug them in, format it, boom, format it directly in the PS5 and it's working. It's good to go, not bad. But a good one of those is gonna cost you quite a bit. Um, I would say you probably don't wanna go with a 500 gig solution on any of these. It's really not gonna last you all that long. It'll probably only take you know, half a year at the most for I'd say most gamers. So you're probably gonna need a terabyte. Anyways, a nice external SSD is a really great option, but not the right option for me. I'm gonna show you what my favorite option is now. Next is to get yourself a really good 2.5 inch SSD. And ultimately this is the option that I went with. I found this Samsung Evo one terabyte 860, 99 bucks. It's still like three times faster than what you see inside the PS4 Pro. Plus it can be easily repurposed into your gaming PC or laptop or even be used as a really nice budget transfer drive. And that's really where the only downside is. You might be wondering, okay, you're taking a 2.5, why do I still, why is this still in the box? Are you gonna open that thing in that box? It is extra steps to take the 2.5 and repackage it in a form that's able to be plugged into, you know, USB-A with the 3.0 or USB-C but you have the freedom to do that however you want, and then it opens up for those other uses like I was talking about. And I'll show you real quick how I do it. What I use specifically is the Atomos Master Caddy, which has these little, little boxes for your 2.5 inch drives, and then they plug in directly here. But keep in mind, all options are definitely not created equal. You're gonna wanna spend a good bit of time uh, reading up on the reviews and seeing how they connect exactly, uh, look at the numbers that people have gotten when they've run tests of the speeds themselves. Some of the adapters might plug into the SATA plugs here uh, for power, for data, and that might turn itself into a USB 3.0 or a USB-C itself. This one specifically, it slots in. Beautiful. It's got its own set of plugs, so if I wanted to go directly to the motherboard, boom, I've got the plugs right there. Or if I want to do USB-C, it's good like that as well. Another quick thing, don't use just any regular cable that you charge your phone with to transfer data, especially a lot of data. I have specific cords that are able to transfer up to like, you know, 500 megabytes per second. This is the only solution I've ever used that didn't run into that problem of the sustained writing speed. I think this is the best option in general, definitely the best option for me. I'm always needing another, you know, I need to uh, boot up an OS on another computer or transfer a bunch of data or, you know, not even a lot, just a little bit. It's nice to have something like this around. What if you need, you know, multiple solutions? Boom, I can keep some of my games on this. This also does work with uh, regular hard drives, the small 2.5, you know, slower hard drives. It's just a good option that gives you a ton of maneuverability. And I am all about that value. The next two are kind of similar to this as well, more of the modular approach of kind of making it yourself and moving parts around. You could do the exact same process as that, just with a larger cage for this, and you could get a plug-in option similar to the Atomos. The only real cool thing I'd say is you can get the adapter that you can plug in 2.5 inch drives and 3.5 inch drives, just right there, hot and ready to go. You just plug them in, pull them out, boom. I, I think that's pretty cool. The last option I was really close to, uh, but I also think it's kind of the worst option available, um, it's go ahead and getting an M.2 NVMe uh, using it right now, whether, you know, like for me to throw it in there or to find its own special enclosure. Because on a huge positive, whenever the PS5 finally does update and allow you to slot that in there, well, boom, you've got your M.2 ready. Uh, if you get the enclosure, well, you just open that up, switch it in there. You know, you're not getting as much speed when it's on the outside, but you're getting used for it and you're ready to go when it happens, whenever, if ever that happens. So on paper, that definitely should be the easiest, best choice. However, it is very different going from the M.2 enclosures and the adapters that you would need to make that work for now until the update and the SSD and other ones that we were looking at before, like my Atomus. If you go look at reviews, you can go look these up and see how well they're working. But also, you don't really know if Sony is going to approve the hard drive that you select beforehand. And now it's time to get into the installation. Installing an external drive for your games is pretty straightforward, but be aware there are some weird problems that can pop up. 
Today I'm using a 1TB Samsung Evo SSD and an enclosure plugged in with USB-C. The installation process is the exact same for whatever external drive that you're going to be using. If you are using an SSD for this, you can plug it into the front or the back of the PS5, but USB Type-A can only play games when plugged into the back. Also make sure the cord you're using is capable of high-speed data flow and not just a phone charger cord. Go up to the Settings button, scroll down to Storage, now Extended Storage. You should see the drive that you have plugged in and the option to format. The format itself should be quick, and once it's done, you're ready to take PS4 games from your main drive over to this drive or install directly to it fresh. You have a few more control options now. You can decide if you want all your PS4 games to automatically install to this drive. If you ever need to unplug the drive, you can press the safely remove from PS5 button, or you can reformat to XFAT, which is for movies and music. Now let's go to moving games from your console storage over to your extended. You'll be able to see which items can move over to the extended and all that can be moved is the media, the apps, and PS4 games. Once you have them, go to the right, press the move button, and there it goes. I did have something weird happen to me after transferring two of my games over to the new extended drive. I tried to boot up each of those games and they would start to load and then just kick me out to the main screen. The exact same thing happened when I tried Cyberpunk, which was installed on my main drive. I went ahead and fully turned off the PS5 and unplugged it, put it back in, and everything was working just fine. Just something weird that happened to me. Just try resetting it. You should be okay. Now that I've gone ahead and got most of my stuff transferred over, I'm going to transfer over one more game, then I'm going to do a side-by-side -side of the boot time. I'm going to take Monster Hunter, which is on my main drive, start it up, get it to where it gets right into the game, time that, then I'm going to show moving it straight over then booting it up the exact same way and see how long it takes to boot to play. Even though this is a really narrow test, somehow my external drive booted up and got into the game faster than the crazy fast internal drive in the PS5. So I'd say that this is a success and it worked and hopefully all of your stuff is working now too. Again, I appreciate you being here. If you have any suggestions for any other videos you would like to see, please let me know um, in some way, shape or form and subscribe to me and like the video and share it because I need that to happen more because YouTube doesn't like me on its own. But if I can get friends who will do that for me, then I would be very, very happy for that to happen. Please help me and be my friend.